in this day alone. And the many days and years passed. How you got here to this prestigious, esteemed university. The choices you made that have brought you to this day. Open your heart and quietly to yourself. Say the only prayer that's ever needed. Thank you. Imagine somebody who started a community where orphans had nowhere to go. Like from 1986 in a container, who would have such a vision? I'm Velomina Budi. I'm a director here in Tembisa Child Welfare. And I've been, I'm the founder of the organization. So I've been in this chair for 35 years. Well, we are a group of social workers and we are all working outside Tembiza. And then I couldn't believe it when I started knowing Committee of Tembiza that there was no child welfare in Tembiza. Uh, because myself, I was uh, an orphan brought up by my granny and my siblings as foster children. Now, when we started talking about why does Timbiza not have a child welfare, I took it serious. We were a group of social workers and some of them fell by the wayside. But I took the project forward. By then, it was a small project and what really was... Uh, bothering us was when children were like abandoned or lost they used to sleep in police cells or they would sleep in the hospital uh, waiting for a social worker from a uh, department of social development to pick up the child on monday therefore that's what we really encourage us to start a, a child welfare My name is Tuli, my surname, my previous surname is Davane, then later on got married and Mrs. Sicha. Uh, I'm 29 years of age, I grew up in Tembisa, in the location of Omtambega, but later on stayed at Wilam Lambo. And uh, in 2010, that's when I came to Tembisa Child and Family Welfare, a children's home where we are currently in. As I grew up, I was growing with my paternal family. So when I was growing up, I was a girl. Young girl was selling bangiza, mautoana, mangena, nama penchis, nama I used to sell those things for survival at school. But I was staying with my grandparents until 2006, where I decided that I wanted to stay with my mom. She had stroke then, and my younger brother, she was just born natty. Then we stayed at home with my parents, it was not nice, but I had to sell still to survive. I was in the house, I was in the Children who never get fostered or adopted, but you find that there are children who are like, managed to go through their metric level. So at that stage, after grade 12, we try to help them get into uh, Tibet colleges or the universities. Uh, for 12 years ago until now, we have got something like 19 graduates. I remember when I came back um, trying or submitting all these other documents at Pretoria. One day when I came in, our director, Mrs. Budibe, came and said, What is this young lady doing? They said, Ah, she just passed my trick. What did she bachelor? Huh? Why is she still not going to school? No, 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 come, 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 let's sit down. Let's look at her papers. They looked and they said, no, no, no. 
go and apply. We tried applying, went to UJ, went to VETS. They were saying there was space in teaching. I've never applied Bella before. The space in teaching went to VETS. Ah, VETS shut down. No space. Go to UJ, stamp it at the gate. In that world, so alone. And then it is that you know, welfare 2008. And then the the for the forty five, for the six years, like ten years. When the unemployment uh, numbers raised, we started a sewing school. She shared a student, Horoka. I get chichi, work chicha community, and then buy a The sewing school is also a source of income because we we do we we, we sew track suits and uh, anything in the form of clothes and we sell it to the community. But the track suits are for our preschool kids. Three uh, track suit, little t-shirt. Lili Hempeta Skolo, Radi Roka, Lili Shuniki, Le Maruku, Dilo Tampete, Hardeini, the traditional Dinga Tadilo Tori Roka and Receverisa Matuarona and then Reduchoma from Fas. I remember in 2015, there was one project that was uh, introduced by DGMT, DG Mary Trust. Uh, it was like a flourish program. Then she said, apply and see what you can do. It was also a program that um, wanted to empower young women. I applied and I got selected and I started working on that project, whereby I was um, doing classes for pregnant moms. It's called the flourish program. It's still running even today. Children who never get fostered or adopted, but you find that there are children who are like, managed to go through their metric level. So at that stage after grade 12, we try to help them get into uh, Tibet colleges or the universities. Uh, for 12 years ago until now, we have got something like 19 graduates. And then we've got uh, two uh, girls that pass um, beauty therapy where they do manicure, pedicures and all the nice the facial things and the massage. Um, and then we have got some of our kids that were not doing so well educationally, but after they've gone through grade nine, we put them, give them some skills. At the moment, both of them are trained, um, running our bakery. <laughs> Someone my own like And then we've got um, two teachers, a male and a female, they did BA honors in teaching. And then we've got a lady, a girl who's a medical doctor. She works in the Eastern Cape. And then we have got people who did um, engineering. One did civil engineering diploma, and the other one did electrical engineering. So at the moment where we are, is like we have got two children's home. The children's home here has got 40, uh, 74 kids. And then the children in Pomolong were HIV positive kids. Uh, we are there about 90, uh, 29. And then we have got two very big preschools. The one here takes 150 kids, and the preschool in Pomolong takes 60 kids. We have got a a, a, a young man who came here from the net bank hub and he, he told us that he was trained with urban farming and then he wanted to do some practicals and we ultimately end up employing him because he could um, plant any vegetables 
uh, that we needed. In 2015, oh, 2014, on the 1st of November, I got employed here as an auxiliary. Then I started working because I couldn't go to school anymore because we were done with our all case group and other methods of social work. So I had to come here. Then when I was coming here, 2014 started working, 15, I would do some projects, baking projects, teach people how to bake. And, and remember, that's a skill that I acquired when I was still living in a child aided family. It's not a skill that I've learned. So I've learned it from there. Then I would teach others how to bake and then we'll do the bakery projects. Then I started doing some big, uh, uh, gardening projects here. Then I would be in touch. I would work with Foster Care. Yes, we are getting subsidy. We run the organization with something like 12 million. This year is 12 million, but the subsidy from the government is 9.6. So that we actually have to raise 2.4 million from all the projects that we are doing. We've got one project where we ask people to write us debit orders. A 50 rand, a 100 rand, a 200 rand, a 500 they make a difference in our lives. And we also have four huge projects annually. One of them is the gala dinner that comes in November. And with the profit we get from the gala dinner is the one that we help to kickstart the children in our children's home and those that are going to college and varsity the beginning of the year. When we run this gala dinner with like we in this gala dinner in November we try to make between fifty and sixty thousand profit on it. Like uh sure that is kirata or sure it cuts a lay because of it was about to bacon say I hate omundomo how can I get bow amohela and then limewa mo or retail or much high can Santo smile or my road to see. People are not very eager sometimes to work with their hands. People just want to get to a job and eight to four and be paid. And unfortunately, the way there's a lot of unemployment, as long as we are having that mentality of somebody must give me a job eight to four, uh, we, we are not going to make it a, a huge difference in the lives of our children. You could imagine a 67 year old doing what she's doing. Now she should be a pensioner sitting at home. But when she thinks of a child, she doesn't want to sit down. She still stands and come. You'd find in our foster care cases whereby we've got children who have passed their matric, who have done well, but got nowhere to go. She doesn't say, no, go and look for NEFSAS. And say, she just says, I don't have money in the organization, but I need to foresee that you are registered in a school. You've got pocket money, you go like the correct number of children that are there and they are doing it. Not only with children, even with staff. She just looks at you if you have got potential, just say, you are 34, you can't go back to school. Currently, you've got those who are rewriting their metric. They've been working for quite a number of years here, but because of staff development and the development that she pursues, she wants them to go to school. Like last year in the organization, a 54-year-old was in class doing a diploma of CYCC. That she's that kind of a person who wants to empower people, see people doing the work. And uh, she always says, I'm a BBC, born before computers. But she strives, even if she's a born BBC, because she wants to see that BBCs can do it, can pull it through. Like she's one person, I don't know how to, to, to put her, but she's one in a billion. Because I see million, yes, we do have million, but she's one in a billion because what she's doing is quite interesting. And she, she tries her level best to see young people changing the world and being changed. And I said initially, she's an agent of change. Second chance. So now we're gonna turn the rules about who funda now, like. In thirty years, 
beside government's money when it didn't include the subsidy only what we raised from the corporate world from the community from a man in the street who collected in the collection box we calculated something like 24 million people need to be empowered in a way that they can be able to sustain themselves because what she did she always used a developmental approach i was young staying in a childhood family she empowered me i'm somebody else today i'm contributing to the economy of the country you could imagine the one who's a doctor she's not only doing uh, individual work but she's uh, also contributing to the whole economy of the country the ones who are also social workers today they've got their own houses their own cars their own families they're able to reflect and say oh when they're writing their story of who they are mrs Tipudibe is there not only them there are lawyers who are there <laughs> Because of Baba and Baki, but like little company said him. Dina Lu, like who phone Nella, and then Shor Banya Kebach, and then Habanya Kabachu, but some much and such a welfare, Bahopele, like Mistress Savona, Ava, like Ava Fail, the number Savona, Lidins, CV Savon, and then Rebat Sir by his same mobile over Camo, and so I go Poluna Lu, or one or Kilan Ramisa Molra Cholo Raki Taka is right. Because <laughs> And so that is why I can hardly tell about Chuvel. Rababota, Arnakova, Rutella, or Baya, Fitch, Hai Baduli. Rabarutella or Batole Pil. It's saying who do la because of how Kadula or Kasi, Utajang, how do it. Not everyone would come with the intention of assisting. Some would want to say, I would assist you, whilst they know fully well that the intention is not to assist. But honestly, looking at where I'm coming from, it all started at school, where I was supported by my teachers. Then if my teachers did not support us, maybe we wouldn't have landed at Tabisa Child Welfare. Maybe we would have landed in wrong hands. Look at our centers. Look how strong and well built they are. Solid buildings with furniture. Although a lot of furniture is donation from companies, yes. So it's like we, if you need, you must be committed, you must be passionate about what to do. It's not very easy to say you can run a children's home, but at the same time, the same breath I'm saying is doable. You can do it. The winds in my form in a matting and up a manger and came to say here I hate you. Boom, Nandy, I'm enjoying life so. Oh, Mamma, you are not with me. Mamma, we will go to you. Don't give up, persist in what you believe in, push, press until something great happens in your life. Keep that humble spirit and be yourself. Don't live for people because what kills us most is that container or little box that we are closing ourselves in. Be out of the box, think out of the box, be out there, push, and you see yourself, you know what, penetrating through walls. And they would ask you, how did you do it? Then you say, greater is he than is that it's in me than the one who is in the world. And that would have been God. This day, where many of those breaths were taken for granted, you just expected the next one to come. But the truth is, there's no guarantee that the next one comes. This day, how you started your day, what your thoughts were this morning, how you've carried yourself through this day, how you've been allowed to have encounters and experiences, some challenging, some more life-enhancing, 